like it or not, with Benjamin Dixon, starts now. Welcome to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. And not care who doesn't like it. You're a little bit delayed there. To, uh, today, <laughs> what's going on, Rebecca? Today <laughs> is Monday, March 8th, 2021. Thanks so much for joining us. We are missing our better third. James, the DJ Bubba Williams exclusive is not with us today. And, and I don't know what to do, Rebecca. It's just not the same. It ain't the same. Like, I miss him with his, you know, because he'll have his nice little smile. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And his chinky eyes under the glasses. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Nah, nah he's a, uh, uh, but you know, the thing is though, um, technology, he's going to be joining us uh, via uh, <laughs> replays during the commercial <laughs> breaks because we got to get commercial breaks. We got to have something like we can't, we can't not, we can't have an entire hour or two hours without uh, the DJ with us, without James. So shout out to him as he goes into and does what he has to do with the stuff that he has to do. Uh, and with who he has to do it with. With, with. with who he has to do it with. And it shall not be <laughs> spoken on air, but we see you, brother. Uh, so much going on. We have a lot of guests this morning, a lot of stuff happening over the weekend. Uh, Rebecca, did you see that uh, Meghan Markle, uh, Oprah Winfrey interview last night? No, I didn't because I wanted to say savor the moment. So when I'm in, like I've been, like I told you, I was resting this whole weekend. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted to make sure that I'm like up and alert when I'm watching it. So I could be like, oh, oh, what, what happened? What did Diana say? <laughs> oh, you know, all of that. Well, Diana, um, I didn't want to be. Diana ain't because, saying much. Uh, yeah. Rebecca. Well, because she's in. She did. She is saying much, though. If, if well, she did. See, okay. Okay. If, okay. I see if you, you really it. see the clips, you know, right. um, I saw them before. You know, the the previews, and there was one that particularly got me. Spoiler alert! And mm -hmm. that was basically that she um, left money. She left money, and they were yeah. living off that money as if she knew that he would be the one to be exiled <laughs> or treated that way, or be dating somebody of another. Right. I, you know, as 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 why I didn't watch it. I, I I don't know if I watch it or not. I just kind of participated via Twitter and saw all of the uh, feedback. And I'm just thoroughly enjoying the fact that so many people are now generating a or developing a really deeply seated hatred for monarchy and for kings and queens and all that stuff. But I just can't help but wonder, like, if they're them treating Meghan Markle this badly, what what do you think they would have done if like they if 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 they had a sister, and that sister would have brought home a black man? I think. I, I think they'll have a whole nother war on their hands the way they the way they treat Meghan Markle because it was just Tyler Perry. It got so bad. Tyler Perry had to come in and actually help them out and give them a place to stay and provide security. Medea's witness you, protection. Spoiler program. alert. <laughs> It's what you're talking about. It's everybody watched it last night. Everybody I didn't watch don't it be on, but sometimes when people are about to watch their shows, mm -hmm. they stay off of social media maybe for a day or two for that particular reason because people like to be shocked. Now you giving all the tea because I ain't even know that part. You did not. Well, I mean, listen. Shout out to Tyler Perry for for <laughs> uh, helping with international relations. <laughs> Medea, I'm serious. It was, it was hilarious. Medea stepping in to help them with. It. So I don't know. I, I don't really care about the situation. Normally, don't even talk about that kind of stuff. But I'm just. I'm. But just it's important thrilled. to talk about that because it's it's. And I was just telling you, racism is real. I don't care yeah. like if it's in. Britain. They're the or, original racist. And, the, and, and, and exactly. Which brings me to what we were talking about earlier as well, which is the, sh the, the, which you need to watch the show, small axis, um, which talks about the, um, the racism in Caribbean communities in Britain. And, mm. um, it's very, it's like, yeah, they are the blueprint of how we did it over here, honey. Yeah. Um, because yeah. they are, they treated those people like trash. And there's a story of, which I didn't even know about, called the Mangrove Nine, of nine people of color um, who were attacked and um, disrespected every day by police officers. Um, and they had to go to court for that. I think it was like 50 something days or something. Yeah. Um, and they were going back and forth and fighting for that. And you should definitely check it out, Mangrove Nine. And it goes through like a five stories um, of people, actual stories of people in the uh, Caribbean community in Britain and how they were mistreated, the untold yeah. stories. Yeah, no, it's uh, I don't know. It's it's this weird thing where I, I think people th think because they have British accents that there's like no they're racism special. over there. Right. Right. So but no, I, I you know, obviously, this, they're, they're the original colonizers. I mean, literally, 
colonizers. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. So we have a lot of news uh, to cover the uh, passage of the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. Uh, we'll be joined throughout the d- today with guests who are going to be speaking about different components of it. Joe Manchin's role in it, Kirsten Cinema's role in it, along with a lot of stuff that's happening with COVID-19. But I want to begin with the $1.9 trillion bailout package that passed the Senate over the weekend. Um, On Saturday, after a marathon amendment voting session, the Senate passed Biden's COVID stimulus bill by a 51 to 50 vote with Vice President Kamala Harris casting the tie breaking vote. Zero Senate Republicans voted for the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill. And now that it's passed the Senate, it would be sent back to the House for final approval before it's sent to Joe Biden's desk. Now, I want to go over the good, the bad and the ugly of this bill, because there is both uh, good, bad and ugly inside of it. One of the more notable items included in this spending bill was a child tax credit. According to the experts on the provision, it will basically establish a guaranteed income for families with children. Now, this obviously is not going to help every single American, but for families with children, it's going to be uh, a very good help. This bill will increase the existing child tax credit. Uh, to as much as 3600 per child. Previously, it was only $2,000. The bill will also allow these tax credits to be given the families periodically instead of just during tax season. Families with kids under six would receive up to $3,600 per child. Families with children age 17 and under will receive a credit of $3,000 per child. Nearly 11 million one in seven children in the United States lives in poverty, according for the Center of American for American Progress. The proposal will lift nearly five million children out of poverty. Uh, the Columbia University Center on Poverty Social Policy reports. Now, here's the bad. Although the expansion of the support for families passed the Senate, workers once again were left out in the cold. Seven Democrats voted against the proposal to increase the minimum wage to $15. Of course, no Republicans voted for it, uh, but seven Democrats voted against the proposal for $15 an hour. Those senators were Joe Manchin of West Virginia, Kirsten Sinema of Arizona, Jean, Sh- Jean Shaheen and Maggie Hassan of New Hampshire, Tom Carper, Chris Coons of Delaware, John Testa of Montana, Senator Angus King, the independent from Maine who caucuses with the Democrats also voted no. Now, most of the focus has been on Kirsten Sinema, and we're going to get to that uh, because of how she did it. The, the manner in which she did it was extremely offensive. But Matt Binder, uh, Bender pointed out on Twitter that she's not alone. He said on, on Twitter, quote, a lot of people rightfully focused on Kirsten Sinema's old tweet in support of raising the minimum wage. But did you know that almost one, every one of the eight Democratic senators who voted to kill the minimum wage increase has tweeted out the same support of the thing they voted against? And we're going to bring the receipts. On April 28th, 2014, Joe Manchin of West Virginia said this. He said, quote, full time minimum wage workers in West Virginia earn twelve hundred and fifty seven dollars a month. This barely covers food and housing expenses. Hashtag raise the wage. Sounds good, right? He voted against it. On April 30th, 2015, Gene Shaheen tweeted, hard working Granite State uh, deserves a raise. Let's hashtag raise the rage to $12 by 2020. Well, it's 2021 and they voted against raising it. On April 28th, 2014, Chris Coons tweeted, uh, quote, Raising the federal minimum wage is the right thing to do for Delaware's economy. Hashtag raise their wage. They love these hashtags. On April 30th, 2014, John Tester tweeted, 42 senators blocked a hashtag minimum wage increase that would give over 80,000 Montanans a pay raise. Hashtag MT politics. Hashtag raise the wage. So all of these people voted against raising the wage, but they took to social media over the years saying that they wanted to raise the wage, Rebecca. And when they got the opportunity to raise the wage, they voted against it. The ugliest part of it all is Kirsten Sinema because of her performance, of how she did it. It's one thing to vote against it, but to do it in a manner that is so offensive to the people, well, it's going to stick with her for a little while. I want you to take a look at this clip. Um, um, I want, uh, we're going to take a look at the clip when we get a second of the manner in which she did it, Rebecca, which was mm. so disgusting. Um, let's take a look at that real quick. Miss Cinema, Miss Cinema, 
No. Look Miss Cinema. Miss Cinema. No. All right. So, Rebecca, um, yeah. What, what do you got? First, um, I want to hear you say raise the wage because it, it started becoming a tongue tire for you. <laughs> you started saying rage the wage. But um, yes, it is. When I saw um, next time cinema, you mispronounce something, I'm gonna put you. No, on no, blast. no. I, I was feeling, I was feeling it for you. I was like, <laughs> dang, how many times is raise the wage in here? Because it's turning into rage wage. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Cause I would have, you know, I got these races. I'd be stuck on all these words, but I knew, mm. um, cinema. Uh, I just thought that was, um, even though it was a, a short moment, it, it, it spoke loudly, right? It yeah. was, it was a short, quiet moment. It spoke very loudly because, you know, you just came from voting, um, to hurt people, the right. community, you know, people who put you in office, who put you in that space. And for you to go out and curtsy mm. and thumbs down, you know, saying that you ain't voting for it and you curtsy your behind off. I, um, you know, when it's time for you to come out of office, uh, yeah. may we do the same thing to you. Um, yeah. Thumbs down your behind all over, all over social media. I need like social media to be covered in thumbs down with a picture of her and people curtsying on TikTok <laughs> in honor of her. I don't care how long it takes, whenever um, 22, 22 or if it's 24. Um right. For the year that we get her out, she needs to go, and we got to make sure that this is the thing that does it for everybody. Yeah, this is yeah. unforgivable for me. Right. So, um, yeah. No, and it's and a lot of you know folks are trying to say uh, not a lot, but some people are trying to say, oh, it's sexist to discuss how it's to- people on our on the Democratic side trying to pull that. Up. I'm like, I, excuse me, this, and it's not that it's sexist because we're looking at a woman's uh, um, motions and saying, oh, this is what she was doing, and it's disrespectful that she did it. So if men say that it's considered sexist and they're you know disrespecting the woman and they're judging the woman, it's we're. It's crazy how you guys are gonna look for an excuse. Oh, girl, literally thumbs down and did and did that gesture mocking the situation yeah. Yeah. of the poor and 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 to keep people down. She mocked it. She disrespected it. I don't yeah. care what she tweeted out after the fact. I don't care what she supported before that. That mm. moment was very telling, and that's what we should stick on. It should oh, not yeah. be what we start doing is reaching right, and we're reaching with short arms at this point. If we're gonna <laughs> discuss and talk about her, like. We got to call it what it is. And that right. was, that was disrespectful. That was, that was Matt. That was so, that was disrespectful on a, for, on a whole lot of levels, right? So we're going to be joined later on by Brianna Westbrook, Brooke, who's the vice chair and executive committee member of the Arizona Democratic Party. Um, but it was so disrespectful because she did it in a manner that was mocking, right? It's, it's the mm-hmm. mockery. It's like, it's one thing for you to say, um, no, you're not going to get a wage or a wage raise. Rebecca, it's one yeah. thing to say that. Raise it's another ways. thing. <laughs> it's another thing to go out there and and imitate what John McCain did um, right before he died. Like one of the only good things John McCain ever did was to protect the Affordable Care Act, and he went down to the Senate floor and did a thumbs down. Um, and by voting thumbs down, he actually helped save the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. Here she comes doing the same gesture but doing it to hurt the people of Arizona, hurting people yeah. all across. So it's across not about her being a woman. Right. It's not. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you just gave a really good point. And that was basically McCain did it. And then and that's where people are coming from, saying that we're judging her gestures uh, as being disrespectful because she's a woman. No, because of what she did. Right. Now, what old boy did. OK, he saved the Affordable Care Act, which helped people. Right. Um, and then you have this. Who's it going to help? Nobody, not them, not us poor folks. Right, the majority. <laughs> and so, and and then, and here's the other thing, right? So here's their opportunity to literally do good. They could have passed this. There was literally nothing stopping them because they have the majority that they needed in this moment to get this attached to the 1.9 trillion dollars. And it was Democrats who refused to let it pass. Right. We expect this from Republicans. But when you have so many Democrats who basically look at workers across across the country and say, "Mm, no, you're not worth 15 an hour. Right. Mm -hmm. How insulting is that? Right. Mm -hmm. Especially when right now the minimum wage is seven twenty five. You can't even buy a value meal supersized for an entire hour's worth of work in this country. And the party that's supposed to be the party of the people. Right. Supposed to be. 
you have eight senators who voted down. So it's it's insult to injury. There's some good things in this bill, but mm. the fact that we couldn't use this moment in order to get uh, a, a minimum wage increase, like that's the real bailout. People getting twice as much in terms of their labor for an hour, going from 725 to 15, like that's, that is a real stimulus. The $1,400 that they're about to get, and we couldn't even get $2,000, right? We talked about that pretty extensively last week. Couldn't even get 2,000. That $1,400 is going to be gone by the time it gets direct deposited in somebody's bank because people are in the overdraft. People don't have the ends. I mean, this is like a one-time deal versus people getting 15 an hour going forward. So it, it just shows you the values of those Democrats and the games that are being played with, with people's lives, man. Like, like, I just can't imagine. I can't imagine being somebody having to work for seven twenty-five an hour and then seeing Kirsten Cinema come down there, you know, making I think the average senator, the, the senators make an average of eighty-three dollars an hour, and they don't even go to work. Eighty-three. Th- this is what I'm saying. Sometimes, I mean, most times they're not even there. Like they're right. not doing anything unless they're, you know, there's something to sign or whatever. But now, you know, like working. I remember working for eight dollars an hour in college. Um, and not being able to do much. Um, and rent was going up every damn year. Come on. Um, and then finally getting, when I thought I was applying for jobs for $10 an hour because I thought that was such a big deal. Yeah. Um, and when I moved to New York, I went back to working for $8 an hour, $8.25 for writing for a, um, a fashion place, $8.25. In New York. In New York City. I was po- I was so poor. So yeah. poor. Okay, guys? I was so poor. Um, and thank God, I mean, I, I was able to live with a friend, but I had to share a room with two of her little sisters with a dog that peed in front of my bed every single day. Every single day. And you- no, seriously, that, that, that was my life. I was too poor to even go and get food at t- sometimes <laughs> like I was hungry y'all but mm. I thought this was the best then I was offered a position for $13 an hour I thought I hit it rich I thought I mm. hit it but every time I found those positions it was like oh one uh two weeks and then two weeks here and then mm. um three weeks here or just three days here and that that's just how it was the hustle was real and yes, yeah. I mean, it really, really. So I can't imagine like going back to that life, even though what I get paid now still to me is not enough. But uh, and I'm not talking about from the show. But I got to make that clear. <laughs> I got to make that clear because, you know, um, but what I get paid now for my corporate job still isn't enough for me um, and tied in with what I make here still doesn't make enough for me to pay to live comfortably every month. You know, yeah. I got to be pulling money here, pulling money, pull, pull, pulling money there and things like that. But um I know that I am worth more when it comes to the corporate world and how I work and what we do. Um, But what they do is sprinkle benefits over your head and they're still taking it from your check. And they think that that's good enough. So I I can't imagine. So $15 should be something and we should be working on pushing that up. If rent goes up, the uh, wages should go up as well. Period. If rent goes up, wages should go up. But wages haven't gone up in years. I mean... Rent has gone up consistently every year. The cost of a hamburger, this is what they always say. If we raise the wage, right, then the cost of your hamburger is going to go up. Yeah, the hamburgers are so are, are more expensive now than they've ever been, and y'all haven't raised the wage. The thing, the gag is this. <laughs> Price ain't no going, dollar burger no more. Right. You know what I mean? It used to be it used to be two ninety nine value meals. Now the value meals <laughs> like eleven ninety nine after you <laughs> supersize them things. And that's might what I'm as well like, go to Chick fil A. <laughs> Shoot, you might as well do a bid since you already broke over here and McDonald's got to pay for McDonald's a sandwich. You go right over to the quality place and spend that money. And then, you know, be sad about spending that money. You know, it's, you know, you know, you're getting a gourmet. You get, fast you get a food. high quality piece of chicken versus that. <laughs> that if you're going to spend it. If you go, but that's the thing, like the prices have consistently and continuously gone up every single year. And I don't know, like. They know what time it is. They know exactly what the game is. Those yeah. eight Democrats, they're playing their role. They have, like Joe Manchin, for example, he's invested mm-hmm. in companies that pay people a minimum wage. And so if they raise the wage, right, they talk a good game, but they know if they raise the wage, it's going to cost them a few extra pennies. What blows me away is that you get 
You get millions of people who are making poverty slave wages. They can't even mm. live and survive. And then on top of that, you're giving like CEOs and the C-suite, right? the executive suite. You're giving all these CFOs and all these people. You're giving them an obscene amount of money that if they just took a modest reduction in what they're making, every single one of their employees could have a livable wage, but they don't care. They absolutely don't care. They would rather that they are able to get a second yacht versus somebody on the front line of their company, making their company work, being able to live without being stressed. And the other side of it is, is by us paying, by them rather, paying their workers $7.25 an hour, we're subsidizing it. The American taxpayer mm-hmm. is subsidizing these corporations. We're subsidizing Walmart. We're subsidizing McDonald's mm-hmm. because we're helping those, those workers who are making 725, they have to get on assistance. They have to get on SNAP benefits. They have to get food stamps because they can't survive. And so the American people are paying double. Like we're subsidizing billion dollar companies with CEOs who make millions of dollars every single year with obscene bonuses and this obscene golden parachutes. They're going to all always be rich and wealthy. And here we are, the American people subsidizing them because they refuse to pay a living wage. And here you have eight Democrats who are like, yeah, that's how we want this thing to continue. I expect this from Republicans. And at this juncture, I now expect this from Democrats. And the people are going to notice and the people have noticed. And so you said, Rebecca, like, even if it takes four years, however long it takes to get rid of every single one of those Democrats, including Kirsten Sinema, we're going to focus. We, I mean, I don't think they realize how petty we are. I'm going to play that clip of her almost <laughs> every single day. Every time she comes on Twitter, every time she comes on Twitter, every time one, every single one of them comes on Twitter, they have to be reminded that they did this to the people who they expect to vote for them in 2022 and 2024. So that's Look, it. And with that being said, James, <laughs> take <a> <laughs> <laughs> let's go to one of our first artificial breaks. <laughs> James and DJ <laughs> virtually <laughs> representing. We'll be right back with more James like is it all you. <laughs> after this. <laughs> there he is. Let me look. I gotta see. Oh. <laughs> Good morning again, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the show so far. Make sure that you stay tuned. We have some really good guests, great guests coming on uh, very momentarily here. So let's see what we got. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat room. Good morning, Mama. I see you in there. Good morning, Susan. Hope y'all are enjoying this. Hey, make sure that you hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, y'all. Make sure that you get everything. You know, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. So you always know when the morning. See there it go. When like it or not, it's going down, y'all. Anthony, I appreciate that. Mark, good morning. Thought I was nothing without you. Andy, good morning. Brand, brand, good morning, Bubba <laughs> Nat, hey, good morning. Everybody's gonna have a great weekend. I know I am. What's going on? What's going on? Good morning. Purple Rain Hearts, I see you. But you cheated and deceived me. Mommy, you better sing this song in the chat. You have me. Dragon, what's going on? Oh, yeah, we are getting the lines in uh, uh, real soon, so stay tuned, Andrea. We got it coming, though. We had a few technical difficulties, but they're going to get it situated real soon, okay? So it should be open momentarily, y'all. Shout out to the line then, and shout out to the pride. <laughs> Yes, 
So when I tell you, D. Barnwell, what's going on? Like, I really forgot that it was Friday myself until just then. Like, wait a minute, it's Friday. Chuck Diesel, shout out, brother. All those nights alone in our bedroom. You said one thing and did another, didn't you? No, this I refuse to be blue. Don't try, try. Say that. I'm trying to play y'all all the good hits from this week that I played. It was so much new music. My gosh. Jawan's and James Williams. It's so funny. You got like my full name, but like not the full name. Like your middle and last name is my first and last. That's kind of crazy. Okay. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat room taking us out, y'all. Make sure that you are hitting that like button, y'all. Welcome back to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who doesn't like it. Joining me now is Egberto Willis. He is the host of the political podcast, Politics Done Right, a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. Egberto, thanks so much for joining us. How are you this morning, sir? Man, it's my pleasure to be on your show, Ben. And it's it's great being with you, Rebecca. I mean, I, I watch you <laughs> guys. And, you know, earlier this morning, I got up earlier than normal to listen to what your intro was going to be. And man, you guys are on point. You guys are on oh, point. Thank you. Thank we you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I was on your program a couple of weeks ago and I enjoyed myself so much. I'm like, I absolutely had to get you to come on and talk. And I think this is a perfect time. Um, I want to start with Joe Manchin uh, because you you have a really robust analysis of all this stuff. Uh, Joe Manchin was one of the Democrats, obviously, uh, who voted against the minimum wage increase. Um, and he took to the Sunday shows, uh, CNN, State of the Union with Jake Tapper, and he explained why he fought for less federal aid instead of more. Let's take a look at it real quick. Your changes that you pushed for enhanced federal unemployment benefits now expire about a month earlier. And there's a new income cap for writing them off on your taxes. I have to say, you represent one of the lowest income states in the nation. Why were you fighting for less help for citizens during this cruel economic time? Well, Jake, first, let me just say it's always good to be with you, okay? And next of all, uh, all I did was try to make sure that we were targeting where the help was needed. Right now, we're getting $300 to people who are unemployed by no fault of their own. I want that to continue seamlessly. I think that basically, if you look at all the things that we've done in targeting, how we help the families, how we help their children uh, with child tax credits, there was so much more that we were doing. We're giving more help to individuals than ever before. 300 was seamless. It continues on through the end of August if needed. And that's what we tried to do. So one of the things he didn't mention there that he actually said uh, online, as well as in a previous interview, is that he didn't think um, that it should be four hundred dollars a week for unemployment because that would de-incentivize workers from going out to find jobs. Egberto, what's, what's your take on Joe Manchin and, and all of this gaslighting? <laughs> well, there you go. Gaslighting he's doing. Joe Manchin doesn't, uh, is not even consistent with the things that he's saying. Uh, he realized how he sounded on some programs, and then he said that the reason he went ahead with the $300 was uh, sort of a technical thing, right? In other words, uh, since the people are getting $300 now, if they go up to $400, it'll create a few weeks where they don't get their pay, which makes no sense. He said that to Mar Martha Radak uh, on the ABC interview. Yeah. Now, what was distressing is that I didn't hear the appropriate questions because he made a plausible argument. That argument that he said was, uh, you know, but I want to start at $11 because if you see $11, what you'll see is that that actually takes a person 
out of being in poverty. The problem with that is, Mm -hmm. let's go under the assumption that minimum wage had gone up with inflation. Uh, What you would have seen then is that the minimum wage should be over $20 right now. So um, he wants to start indexing from $11, which is nothing more than wage theft over the last generation. I wrote a piece on this same issue where I said, we, uh, those of us with a progressive bent, need to change the argument. The argument shouldn't be, oh, people need to, people deserve this. People, the argument should be, why had we allowed wage theft over the last 20 plus years, over the last yeah. 30 years? Because what happens is when you go ahead and not increase the minimum wage. That owner of the bakery store, flour goes up every year, sugar goes Mm -hmm. up every year, uh, butter goes up every year, the rent goes up every year, and that baker pays it every year. The only, and he raises his prices a bit every year. The only thing that stays stagnant is that workers pay, that worker who has no representation. So what that is equivalent to, if you take a look at it, is wage theft, because Mm. he or she is the only one who doesn't have the power to say, wait a minute, it went up for everybody else. What about me? Mm. Mm. Well, yes. And we know Manchin is known for... uh, He's part of the crew that wants to bring everybody down and make sure that their pockets are fat and keep yeah. us down and suffering. Um, so next up, Manchin was on Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace, and there he explained his opposition to removing the filibuster. Let's listen to that. I'd make it harder to get rid of the filibuster. I'm supporting the filibuster. I'm going to continue to support the filibuster. I think it defines who we are as a Senate. I'll make it harder <laughs> to get rid of it, but it should be painful if you want to use it. You just you should make you make sure the place works to where, OK, I want to work with you. How can we do this? How do we move forward? My Republican friends are my friends. They're not my enemies. And my Democrats is my colleagues. They're not my enemy. either. That's my caucus. Together, we've got to make this place work. And it should be harder to invoke pain. It should be painful for us. Don't make it painful for the other side. Don't make it painful for the. I, 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 Egberto, what, what? I'm sorry. Good God. Yeah. Look. Let, <laughs> let, 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 let me say, um, before, before I go into that specifically, it is ironic that what we have is this person, he, he refers to the Republicans all of the times as my friends, and he refers exactly. to Democrats as the Democrat oh. group, or he also mm. says the, he, he, he uses the term uh, my colleagues. He doesn't have that warm feeling with the Democratic (laughs) side. But it's deeper than that, right? Uh, right. Chuck Todd knocks on this, and Chuck Todd isn't the bastion of liberalism or anything like that. Chuck Todd says, but wait a minute. The filibuster is not in the Constitution. It doesn't have anything to do with what the founding fathers want. Not that I care what the founding fathers wanted, right? After all, that's (laughs) three-fifths of a person. But um, (laughs) but he, he said... Uh, the founded fathers didn't even have that in which mansion was like the founding fathers wanted this to be a deliberative body. Well, it's not a deliberative body. It's a body that can't get anything done. That's not deliberative. Mm. But as far as the filibuster is concerned, um, he's really protecting himself. Uh, he represents neoliberalism like no other. And mm. uh, with his daughter uh, picking up the slack. So that is to be expected. Mm, I you you, you're hitting on on all these points. Right. So it is not a deliberative body. It's a it's a malfunctioning body. It's not getting anything (laughs) done. And so help me help the people understand then why why the establishment portion of the Democratic Party continues to support people like Joe Manchin when at times when we need a critical vote, he's always there to side with Republicans. The establishment, uh, you know, uh, I heard you guys talking about the monarchy earlier, right? Uh, And I love the conversation because I love um, uh, some of how Rebecca put it. But but here's the but here's the kicker. we have a certain gravity in this country and the people that are feared the most are the people who empower people. So the establishment has a decision to make. Do we start off a 
fission reaction. In other words, a chain reaction where people really start to feel empowered. Uh, ben, I know you know about the Powell Manifesto, where uh, progressive, when progressive values were really making it big in this country. Mm, uh, yeah. uh, Lewis said, oh my God, these guys are going to realize that the current economic system, really, they're getting screwed. So we have to make sure and infiltrate everything so that... Uh, you know, the power base will be lost to the masses if we don't do this. So they infiltrated the colleges, the universities, the school, the media and many others. That's why I love programs right. like yours, because you cut the crap. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you really cut the crap. The establishment is scared. The establishment of the Democratic Party wants to do more than the establishment of the Republican Party. But they don't want to do too much because mm -hmm. too much means people would be too empowered. Now, as far as Ben mentioned, yeah. we are stuck. I, talk, I think for now we are stuck because mm. uh, he may think that he has power, but right now we just need to use him for whatever we can get. And the, then the progressive base really has to empower itself to really put the people that really need to be there in there. And I think we can. I think mm. we can, but I think we have to play it very smart. Mm. So, so when you say like play it very smart and go, the progressive people have to make sure we empower, are you saying, uh, what, what's the call to action that you're saying we should do? Should we continue pushing to mobilize voting, uh, uh, educating our, our certain communities about who these local people are, who the people are over their state, who the people are in office, so they know? What would you say that we can move this progressive yeah. movement forward? We can continue it to get those people like Manchin out of those spaces. First of all, I'm going to tell you this. I love what I'm seeing right now. I love what you guys are doing. You all represent the generation that's going to make the change. In other words, what you all, when, when I see uh, the younger, my younger court out there doing this on their own, when I see my younger court mm -hmm. out there in the streets, when I march with BLM, when I march with uh, uh, ladies who lunch, when I march with all these guys, and, and I'm not only talking marching for the sake of marching, because damn it, we've mm -hmm. done a hell of a lot of marching and no action. Mm -hmm. That's OK, <laughs> what I've seen is people now who are effecting change, people who are really making a difference in what they're doing. So I think that is what's important. So when, when you ask me what's the call for action, the call for action is let's get busy and continue doing what we're doing. Uh, yes, yeah. go TV, educate. And I think the biggest part is educating people to what is actually happening and how things work. You guys are doing a good job. I see a lot of other organizations, a lot of other small things doing the same thing. So I think we are correctly on track. I think we have to keep it up. I think the one piece that we're missing right now is uh, integration of all these disparate pieces that are doing hard work. Yeah. yeah, no, that's 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 huge. That and I think that has to be the next the next stage in this evolution, right? Like um, the disparate pieces in media, which is why, like, when we connected, I'm like, I want us to continuously connect because uh, without us unifying at some level, it doesn't mean we all have to 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 you know start a company together. But <laughs> if if we don't have like some camaraderie amongst all of these different platforms, these different media outlets, uh, these different organizations that are doing organizing on the ground, you know, we're fighting up against some pretty powerful forces, right? Uh, the infiltration that you spoke of, right? It, it's it's real. And Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema are representative of that, uh, along with so many other Democrats who are in these spaces occupying seats for the purposes of preventing progress. We're fighting up against billionaires who can drop $10 million on one person's podcast, on, on Ben Shapiro's podcast. Mm -hmm. So without that unification, I, I just, Egberto, I don't think we're going to make it. What do you, can you speak on that a little bit more? Yeah, well, you know, I, uh, several, several years ago, I, when I started doing this, I said, what I want to do, uh, one of the things I want to do is work in collaboration all over. And what I mean is not only online, I mean in print, I mean in every fashion together, people of like minds. Because when you take polls as far as what people want, what people want are the things that many of us represent. And the problem is uh, we have forgotten things like one person, one vote, even though with the Electoral College that presents an issue. But in, a, in the aggregate, one person, one vote. And um, what we have to do is detach money from people's vote. There's nothing that says inherently that if I throw a lot of money at something that 
in, in inherently they're going to vote a certain way or whatever. An educated person will, will take your money and vote their conscience. And I think that is where you come in, where Rebecca come in, where all of us come in. And that is to say, you know, I mean, if you, if you take a look at my website, I have ads from the corporate structure. Some people would say, that's hypocritical. And I say, well, why is that hypocritical? I'm using the funding that, mo- that, mm-hmm. all of that, that in the aggregate all of us produce to go ahead and do good. What you're doing right. is do good. And what is doing good? Education. I can tell you uh, from the different audiences that, that I have, and I'm sure it is the same for the different audiences that you guys have. People, the letters that you get that say, wow, I didn't realize that. I really feel empowered. Now I am going to do something. Yes. The problem yes. is that since our reach in the aggregate is not large, like, you know, you get on ABC. When <laughs> Come on, Ben. When you are on MSNBC, you have millions of people watching you right away. But mm-hmm. when you are on, you know, uh, EgbertoWillies.com or Politics Done Right, you have a few thousand people that are going to see your podcast and these other things. But the way you increase the scale is through what I call geometric progression. Geometric progression mm-hmm. says if one person talks to five and teaches that five persons how to talk to five, if you take a look at how a geometric progression works, you can reach the entire country, but everybody has to be on point and everybody has to be educated to how this stuff really works and not feel mm-hmm. defeated. I have one person on my, my uh, show all the time, but the rich people always win. And I'm like, because most of the people feel the way you do. Now, let's mm. talk about how do we change that feeling? Mm. Yes. And, and, and you say that, how do we change that feeling? We have to walk in that. Not only because we, we, we're so used to, as a society built for us, we're so used to saying, okay, this is it for us. And right. we're just never going to be rich. We're not supposed to be rich. Um, right. This is just our life. Um, and you said something like you've been talking about our show and how you like it. Uh, and I appreciate that so much. That's an honor. Thank you so much. You come from a background uh, in a software company, 20 years in a software company, and you decided to flip it on its head and bring it over to, to, to progressive politics. So what led you to that avenue? Yeah. You know, I'm going to be extremely honest. First of all, um, the my website was making enough for me to be able to make. I mean, it, first of all, it's altruistic, yes, but it, you can't have altruism with a starving belly. So, <laughs> um, the, so I got... I was making enough from the website that I could make the transition. I turned my license over to somebody, the license for the products that I created to another good friend of mine. And then I started the, you know, this voice because I've always been active in at the University of Texas. I was in the South African Liberation Action Committee, the Afro-American Culture Committee, the Caribbean Central American Association and all these things. So I've always been active politically. When I went to work for corporate America, you know, I had to tamper that down and blog with a pseudonym. When I formed my own Mm. software company, of course, I had to blog with a pseudonym. But when my daughter went off to college, I could really be who I wanted to be. And Mm. many times I would sit down and dark and like, damn, somebody got to do something about that. Somebody has got to say something about that. Or when somebody says something on on the TV that makes no sense, it's like, why isn't somebody talking about that? And I remember Mm. sitting down in the dark once and saying, well, damn it. You're always talking about what somebody has to do. You do it. Mm -hmm. And since Mm -hmm. I was a software guy and I understood computers, all that good stuff, I just created my own little one person production company and started doing it. And when it came to doing things like, well, when they say something wrong on TV, who is there to refute it? Well, I started doing that. I hear Chuck Todd say something that I or something that should be asked. Like I didn't hear the mass mansion about uh, about. Uh, wage theft. So I did a blog with the video that says he should have asked that, you know, and, and put it out there. Got, I don't know, probably 20, 30,000 views on that. So, I mean, it, it is, it is, um, it was, all of us have our core profession when we go to college. And then I, I say the next thing we have is a passion and a reason. And now I'm doing my passion for a reason. Yes. <laughs> Politics done right. Yeah, <laughs> I feel that. Yeah. I felt. I, I, I felt that, man. Uh, yeah. Tell everyone how they can find your work and 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 watch your show and your podcast. 
Well, thank you for giving me that opportunity. Um, you can go to politicsdoneright.com, politicsdoneright.com to visit us. You can, from, you can also go to Twitter and subscribe to Egberto Willis. That's on the screen right now. Or you can also uh, go to our YouTube channel, which is also Egberto Willis. So, um, uh, and by the way, if you go to egbertowillies.com, you can check out some of our, um, our books as well. I, I just recently wrote a book uh, called It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Friends, Your Right-Wing mm. Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors. And the book, mm. the reason I wrote that book was specifically because um, uh, Rebecca asked earlier, you know, how do we actually change, right? And how yeah. do we get rid of the folks like Manchin and all these guys? We are, we are going to have to bring other people into the fold and whether whether they're progressives or not is is of least importance what's of most importance is how are they going to vote are they going to support the policies that support us all I, you know i just absolutely love um I, I i love your work and i actually i've followed your work for some years uh but more more importantly just you know re, the way you say rebecca and it just I, I, i've been struggling i don't want to mess up your name over and over and over again i feel like this i feel like the the, the country dude from mississippi when i say egberto and then you just Ed like you're just, you're just rolling those, those <laughs> i love that just, i love that rebecca <laughs> say it Rebe yeah. say, please say it, play, say it for me rebecca say it Eg egberto Egberto. There you go, Egberto. I love you, Rebecca. That was great. <laughs> no, so Rebecca. Normal. When I look at the name, that's what I see, you know? <laughs> so, but Ben kept saying, nah, I see it. And I'm like, that's so from, Mississippi, from Mississippi, we say Egberto. I'm mean, actually, yeah. what I'm saying, I'm just going to say E. Hey, thanks, E, for coming on. <laughs> we, we'd love to have you back anytime. We really appreciate the work. Man, it's my you. pleasure being, and, and what I want to tell you guys, thank you for what you all do. What you all do is extremely important. And, you know, I'm honored to be on your show. Oh, man, we appreciate you. that. We'll be back with more Like It or Not after this. DJ, take it away. <laughs> Shout out to everybody that's in the chat room, y'all. We thank you so much for tuning in and watching Like It or Not with us. Make sure that you hit that like button. And always know we can share our minutes with you Always on like it that's going live, y'all. Cool. to make the man, but that poison's gonna kill you. From the inside. Shut up, it get a good morning. Say it with your chest now, say it with your chest now. I'm free. Can't nobody take me here and now. It's my time to run it. Make sure that you get the, the, the voices out downloaded. Oh my gosh, they're still going, but in, in, in my ear, y'all. <laughs> Patricia, I appreciate it. Cheers to all the haters, cause you proved to me yeah. that rising to the top was Goku. Go cool. Shut up, brother. What's going on? Good morning. Brand Brand Rebecca is I'm not playing with us. <laughs> she come gets us all the time. I'm still fly. I'm still fly. Let's go. <laughs> it could all be worse. I could be a now they in my ear talking about accreditations. Oh Lord. Alright, make sure that y'all dropping those lion heads in the chat room. Drop those lines, y'all. Drop those lines, y'all. And a good morning. I'm free. Can't nobody take me here and now. The true dragon, don't start, man. Don't start. It's my time to ride it now. It's my time. It's my time. Oh, oh, oh. If you're on the bus, get it right. If you're on the train, say it. Make sure that y'all download the voices app, y'all, so y'all can be in the building tonight at the Patreon party. Trust me, it is awesome, amazing, and it will go down. You get some of the best music and best DJing you've ever heard, y'all. Get it.
about now Tell me what you learned in grade school Give it to me like you want it Did you forget that golden rule? What is it that right one shot did? It should really be give and take Fill you up and leave me empty Baby, was that the my mistake? Covering these feelings It's the it's the r the, the the Rebecca at the beginning of it. That's that's it did it for Rebecca. Me. But putting it in the like Egberto is is <laughs> Egberto. You see, you're you it's like you're adding 55 more R's. How many how many R's? Row. How many R's should it be? How many R's should it be? I don't know. Uh, Egberto. Egberto. It's Egberto. just like Ber. Ber. I don't even know why it, it it's a thing, but when I like I said, when I saw the name, I knew. What it sounded like, but I don't even realize that I'm rolling my R's when, until you just keep. <laughs> I mean, it, it. Listen, listen. Like it's E. E. Thanks so much for coming on the show. We appreciate I mean, you it. You gotta do what you gotta do. Like hey. there's some people's names. You see, I butcher people's names all the time when they're from the European countries. So I just, you know. Yeah. I, I so is it, should we say is it Meghan Markle? <laughs> Meghan Markle. I'm, it's, I'm it's Markle. I'm, Look, I'm, Markle. I'm just being. I'm just being. I'm just being stupid at this point. Speaking of being stupid, I want us to take a look at this pastor. Um, his name is Pastor Stuart Allen Clark. He's a Baptist preacher from Missouri. He's now been. He's been suspended. He's on leave after this incredibly misogynistic sermon went viral. And uh, Rebecca, I just want you to just oh. take a look at who's saying what's being said in a sermon. He said that women need to lose weight. And submit to the sexual desires of the men in order for their man to stay faithful. I just like nobody should be saying this kind of stuff, but check out your boy saying this. (laughs) Why is it so many times that women, after they get married, let themselves go? We can't. Why is it? Where the sound at? Why do they do that? (laughs) Here's how way too many women are. I got him now. We got to roll it back. The chase is over. Hey, that's where you're wrong. The chase ain't never over. The chase ain't never over. And by God, if he don't love me the way I look now, he ought to look at his own spare tire in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Now look, I'm not saying every woman can be the epic, the epic trophy wife of all time, like Melania Trump. I'm not saying that at all. Now, most women can't be trophy wise, but you, you know, like her, maybe you're maybe a participation trophy. I don't know, but all I can say trophy, is right. not everybody looks like that. Amen. Trophy. No, it never looks like that. But, but you don't need to look like a butch either. Yeah. Hey, here's something you need to know. You yeah, need to he know this. Kid from King of the Men Hill. have a need for the their women to look like women. <laughs> Hey, sweatpants don't cut it all the time, huh? For me, Wearing it do. Wearing flip-flops and, and uh, pajamas to Walmart, ah, that ain't going to work. And he love it. Ain't nothing attractive about that. It ain't. And, and when men <laughs> want their wives to look good at home and in public. Can I get an amen? Yeah. You- <laughs> ain't nobody saying nothing. <laughs> but who says? First of all, who asked you? That's one. <laughs> Two. Who says that a woman can't look good in those things? Three, Melania is really the trophy wife. And then said at least a participation trophy. He said a participation God, trophy. What bro. does his wife look like? That's Lord. what we should have Googled. But no, we, I, no actually, no, 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 I'm not going to victimize her twice because she's victimized, yeah, yeah. first of all, by being married to this clown. I'm Second of all, sure. like, bro, like, listen, listen, like, you can't expect, this, this is my rule of thumb. You cannot expect to get nothing that you don't look like yourself, right? You go out, out here talking about you want a trophy wife and you look like you got like eight bellies of of, of just sheer bacon and sausage and grits in there. And, and he on stage and he asked it like, can I get an amen? It's so funny. The people said they, amen, though. There was like two people to say the amen. It could have been two people in the room. <laughs> so the whole church said amen. The whole church said amen. And I got a problem with that. And what? it could have been men and women who said amen, dummy. Well, he got suspended. No. Apparently, apparently the people in the church didn't appreciate it because he got suspended. You know. Because it went not. viral. Now they got to do cleanup. I'm pretty oh. sure this is, a, they, this is a preach that happened. Somebody put it on. Well, when they put it on air, they didn't think that it was going to have the effect that it did mm. but because it got to 
people, probably the, the white feminist women in the movement, or it got to us, Black Twitter, and we ripped him a new one for <laughs> what he looked like and, and his nerve. Um, and, and, and it's not even the fact that he put Melania for me, because that is the, their shrine of a woman. Like, you know, yeah. she's an old porn star. Oh, like, my God. She, all, <laughs> those kind of things. So um, they, they like that. So I know the women are like, yeah, that's probably what they like. For me, it was him saying, I don't want my wife to look like a stud. Oh, right? yeah. No, excuse yeah. me, not a stud, a butch. Yeah, and I'm looking said, at yeah. him. And like I said, I'm just going to say this because I, James gave me the, <laughs> the approval. I, 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 I don't know. I said, leave it for James to say tomorrow. <laughs> just to be, I mean, do you? He looked like a butch. If, if we're going to say what a butch is. He gave off. And I live, like I said, in a predominantly white area. And... um when I do see um, like lesbian couples and things like that, that's what he looks like. Like the, the ones that like to dress in <laughs> male form, he looks like that. And if he wants to say that, you know, that's less, he's giving off feminine vibes to me. Um, if that's a He's problem. giving off incel vibes. Like he's, he's giving off like, is he even married? Does he even have a wife? Like he gives off the vibes of a dude who finally got a platform and he, he finally made gets up to be the in person front of that he is. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Like, I it's just, the it's jeans just... too. It's always the men in the bugle boy jeans. They got that <laughs> extra little uh, like keychain or whatever hook on the side on the bottom. The cargo, Wide the cargo leg. pants. Put, yes. put, put, put it back on the Wide screen. He got on the, the cargo. <laughs> <laughs> and he really, I think he he thought he was dressed up. I just don't, I don't get like how you put yourself out there. And I bet you he uploaded that video, right? He uploaded that wow. video because he thought he did something. And they put Melania in after the fact. So he really thought he was going, he went viral, just not the way that he thought he was going to go viral. But I don't know. It's just, it's it just to me, it's, it's, I don't it's, it's wild, it was, man. But this is, those are the examples of the people who are leading those um, uh, churches. But, those churches and it goes back to the you know the churches mm -hmm. in those particular areas i have a church yeah. where i live here and those are the type of people that i see coming in and out yeah. now not to prejudge but they've been oh i got a problem with them mm. i passed by it to go to the mm. gas station and they were like you know they were sprinkling in people but i don't know when texas said they were open and mm -hmm. when um mississippi said they were open i don't know if they got a call saying open up their doors mm -hmm. but yeah. literally the whole week the whole week from morning I'm, to night, that parking lot has been filled. And the people that I see coming <laughs> through them doors look exactly like that. And I'm pretty sure they're, they're, they're spreading that particular type of message in that place. I really just want to go hold they, up a sign. They spread like, COVID too. And, and be like, this is like a, a super spreader congregation. Yeah. Go home. Like can, I want to, but you know Can you what? imagine going to church trying to get, a, can you imagine getting COVID-19 to hear some crap like that? Like uh -huh. these folks are really in there coughing and sneezing and passing the collection tray, putting money and touching each other, hugging each other. And this clown up there talking about, you know, y'all are, are nothing but, I mean, <laughs> um, participation tro wives, right? Participation trophy wives. Cause you like, can't be her. <laughs> oh. I mean, let's be, let's, let's just be realistic, man. Like, like, like it, it's, it's, mm, it, it, it hits me because I'm like, dude, do you see yourself? Can you hit the treadmill just for like, Five minutes a day, like let alone like, like. And the only reason we're saying this, it's not to fat shame. It's not to bugle boy shame. They be the one. They be the ones. It's not to um, you know disrespect anybody who you know the word uh, that he used or whatever <laughs> or whatever. Um, but he didn't even got on Levi's. He got it's on literally to, to get with him. And you know what's crazy? And I said this. I said forget him and forget Kevin Samuels uh, because both yeah, of them are yeah. spreading the same messages. Different different arenas of uh, social media Ooh. or whatever. You got one in the church and you got one um, on the, the the social media Zoom life yeah. right now. <laughs> And he's giving the message through there. And it's basically disrespecting women. I don't care what anybody says. If we, if, if women do it and it's a problem, it should be a problem when men do it. We cannot be on here telling people how to be with they man and how to be with they, they men, they, they women. Right. Like, you can't. You just cannot live. tell people that they're, you're too fat. That's why the man don't want you. Did she tell mm. you? She told you she feels beautiful in her skin and you told her, but you're not. But mm. you're not. <laughs> No, that's kind of funny to me right now because I'm thinking about how Kevin told that lady and that lady stayed on the line. So she, that, that's a laughable situation because you stayed on the line to get... To wait, get wait, 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 wait. It's the same message. It is. That, that's the, like... No, I guess you're right. I, I saw your tweet the other day about it. I'm like, I, I guess one for one. But but do you feel like Kevin Samuels at least has 
a little bit more ground to stand on than King of the Hill do. Why? Because you know? he looks, he looks, he's a handsome man. I mean, he's, I'm like, he's a good looking man. Like he is. Kevin Samuels is a good looking man. He ain't fine. You well, know, I he mean, gives, he gives zaddy granddaddy vibes. Um, granddaddy. <laughs> yeah. Granddaddy vibes. Uh, but that don't mean nothing. It, it, mm. it doesn't mean a thing because literally you well, remember like, before the surgery and all this other stuff because men getting surgery too, child. But you remember when all this stuff, you know, back in the day when you used to watch Jenny Jones and Ricky Lake, when oh, they used yeah. to um, just do, literally, the person could come in looking toe down how I look in my home on the weekends. Just really <laughs> just just look like I ain't ate for months, just hair a fool, like it's just <laughs> God, all kinds of ways. But Throw on some makeup. As soon as you throw on some makeup, a cute little outfit, um, and you just say, "Okay, I'm I'm cute," like whatever. That makes a world of a difference. So just because um, this person looks this way and right now it doesn't just, mean that it, like a makeover, a simple haircut could do something. Because when oh, a man gets a haircut, yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking about from the other side. I, I see what you're saying there, but I'm talking about from the other side. Like it, that's like me going and talking about somebody being short. Right. That's like, uh, you know, you just don't step into certain lanes, bro. Like, how are you going to talk about a woman's size when you look like about 12 women packed into one? I just don't understand. <laughs> this <how>. is true. <laughs> it's like true. it takes a little bit like it, at least if you're going to step into that arena, at least like, you know, I don't like Kevin Samuels work and everything like you said, but it, it, at least like. Yeah, it just it just don't seem it just don't seem feasible they, and it, it don't make nah, sense. I don't care if you're doing sense. it in red bottoms. I don't care if you're doing it looking like Boris Kojo. I don't care <laughs> Kojo. if you I don't care. It's it's gonna be to me it's the same. Well no, it's the same. It is no, it's it's totally but the same. But, but he set himself can, up really good. This, but, this but, 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 I see what good. you're saying though. <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> he's like, if you're gonna attack me, you can't even come about my looks though, because a, a dude right. safe fresh. Like, and then he's yeah. over here, but maybe. Maybe where that guy's from, that is fresher than fresh. Okay, this is that's fresh. Okay, maybe where he's from, he is killing them. When he come out, he be like with the beautiful he pulling them in the, he, in the boots, he, baby. He pulling them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's just. <laughs> So I want to, I want to, because there's a lot of stuff that happens in the conservative worlds that I uh, uh, that I just don't understand. Like because you know clearly that was a conservative church, that was an evangelical we, church. Yeah. They, you know, <laughs> but but there's another video that I want to play, and I want to ask our next guest uh, about it when, when we we bring him on, Attorney uh, T. Greg Doucette. But there's there's a video of uh, of them burning masks. You, you know, a bunch of anti-maskers with their children burning the mask and, and it's just i uh let me know if we have that video um it, it's just it's just a level of stupidity that that i just can't wrap my head around in terms of how we're going to survive right mm. you, you, you look at you look at the level of ignorance that's coming from conservative circles particularly like some of these religious evangelical circles like the sermon at your it's a level of stupidity that is mm -hmm. laughable but yo, know, they they get a lot of people killed right now, right? Right. The the anti mask movement and um, my question really is is how how we survive this kind of ignorance, Dwayne. If we have that video, uh, let's take a look at the video of these kids. Uh, Okay, so we'll we'll get that video and play later. All right, so let's do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking with a several more guests. We're going to cover a lot of more news and politics, more like it or not. Uh, after this. Right, don't question my integrity, no I thought we would be just fine And I thought your heart was like mine But let me find out You've been going around throwing shots Running plots, come on, man Trying to block my blessings Shout out to the Wildcats in the building yeah. And I guess shout out to fam you as well too <laughs> Just to grow Pay me what you owe me for I make what you've been saying about me true. We came out of Bethune Cookman College Rebecca Tell them I need my money right now Brought me the juice They stole out my crown Sorry to tell you I know my value I'm gonna recoup it. Don't waste my 
loyalty, my loyalty I let you in back then because I couldn't see But now it's clear you ain't ever been true to me Yes, indeed Two Sinead never lied, I had to leave I love all these, my people in the chat in here I didn't know we had so many rattlers in the building My gosh, man Well, thankfully you guys are now part of the pride That's right, like it or not Lion Squad is the pride That's it, y'all in the pride now, thanks Shout out to everybody this morning That's checking us out, y'all We appreciate the love Make sure that you stay tuned We got a lot more coming up, y'all And look forward to seeing everyone At the patron party tonight, y'all It is gonna go down Tell them I need my money right now Tell them I need my money Promise that you stay stole out my crown Sorry to tell you I know my value I'm gonna recoup it Don't waste my In my eyes and you show me your facade show me your facade how you gonna lie when you look me in my eyes and you show me your facade show me your facade you a lie you a front you say anything long as you get what you want trying to play me like a fool homie i am not a clown y'all make sure that y'all hit that like button now i'm on the verge of a meltdown meltdown I should have known when I met her back at midtime at Dogwood. Well, 88, good morning, good morning. All good. I even told about the dog times I had in childhood when we were driving off of I-10 and Kirkwood. Now all that time I never get it back. You wanted that. Used to hate when I didn't want to hang. I noticed that. Used to talk about your ex, Jake, but your next Jack. Used to messing with them white boys. Now she went black. Wait a minute. Uh, guess you went and got yourself a real life. Got yourself some booty shots and live full up. You just want to make a rap a beat like Bella. You ain't the nice radio you guys Cause up close, baby you a ghost You a demon and you should float Get out the way and just go Shut up, Courtney Welcome back to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who doesn't like it. Joining me, joining me now is attorney T. Greg Doucette, who describes himself on his Twitter as an ex-computer scientist, now criminal defense and First Amendment attorney in North Carolina and Texas, host of the Ethel Mall podcast, Dog Lover, and a hashtag never Trump conservative. <laughs> T. Greg, thanks so much for joining me again. It's been a while since we've spoken. How are you? Wow. I Wow. It, yeah, it's been a and it's been a fast five years prior to those five years. It was in a totally different world. We're at the end of uh, of Barack Obama's term and <laughs> we were talking politics then. And um, I brought you on because you're conservative who or, or do you do you even consider yourself conservative? anymore? how do you identify now? <laughs> Y'all gonna put me on the spot, man. Hey, philosophically, yes, I would say I'm still conservative. You know, one of the one of the ways I explain it to people is that if you put political philosophy on a spectrum, things the government must do, should do, can do, should not do, must not do, mm -hmm. I'm going to have more stuff in the must not and should not side, fewer things on the must and, and should side, and then a whole bunch of stuff in the middle that, you know, I'll leave to the folks in politics to decide whether they want to do it or not. Okay. Uh, so I'd say okay. I'm still a conservative. I'm not a Republican. I left after Trump got elected in November because I knew it was going to be a mess. I didn't realize it was going to be as bad of a mess with half a million Americans dead from a pandemic and the economy being what it is and everything else. But yeah, I, I still think I'm a conservative, but I'm just definitely not a Republican anymore. But how do, I don't even know how that, I don't even know how that works, man. When you, when, when conservatives, okay, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I'm going to put your work on the spot because you do a lot of great work in, in the areas that I'm interested in, right. And in the, in, in the areas that are, that are, important to a lot of progressives. Um, it, it, we can just go back recently to the George Floyd protests. You started an entire library cataloging police violence 
um, in, in black communities, brown communities, and just mm -hmm. all communities. Talk about that library because it really became a pivotal component in fighting against the, the police brutality that was happening during that summer. Man, it started as an accident, truthfully. Like, you know, I've, I've been on this hobby horse about police brutality and misconduct for years. You know, I've been sharing stuff on Facebook for years, been sharing stuff on Twitter for years. You and I met because of that case back in 2016 where yep. that black teenager had been charged with reckless driving for doing donuts in the street when the street wasn't wide enough to do donuts in. You know, that right. was that was my initial uh, brush with Twitter fame. And throughout all these years, anytime I ever share a video or a story about police doing something wrong, you know, and I do it a lot. My entire podcast every week is like 20 stories of police misconduct from around the country. We've been doing that for four years now. Someone comes in and will say, oh, it's just a few bad apples or, oh, they had it coming or, oh, if they had just complied, everything would be fine. And that's not true. That, that is not true at all. So when the protests started, you know, the folks that were watching those first few days that last week in May saw a lot of really wild stuff. And my thinking was, let me just take 10 of these videos. You know, there was a video where they're shooting someone at point blank range with a, a rubber bullet. There's another one where they're actually taking aim at a broadcaster on camera as she's broadcasting yep. live. There's one in Utah where the SWAT team rolls up and first thing they do is push an old man with a cane to the ground because he's Antifa supposedly or something like that. You know, and I put those 10 videos together, posted it on Facebook and said, come at me. You want to tell me that this is just one bad apple? You got 10 bad apples now. Explain this. Right. So to, to keep that same energy on Twitter, I took those same 10 and I put it into a thread. And my expectation was that that was going to be it. You know, we we're going to talk about those 10 and call it a day. But so much stuff kept popping off that people started sending me videos. And so I, I put them in. I was like, OK, I had 10. Here's the next five. And then it became the next 25. And then by like a weekend, I had thousands, thousands yeah. of direct messages on Twitter with everyone's like, do you see this? Did you see this? Have you got this one already? And it just turned into this. I don't know what you would call it, man. It's, it's, it's almost a nightmare. Like I log into Twitter every morning and there's nothing but hundreds upon hundreds of new videos of hmm. police brutality all over the country. Doesn't matter whether it's black folks, brown folks, white folks. Doesn't matter if you're in a, a city or a rural area. Doesn't matter if you're blue state or red state. Everywhere, police were going buck wild on camera and did not care at all. It was mm -hmm. uh, it was a wild. So it, it's interesting. Uh, I know for, even for the audience that's watching or listening to hear um, a white conservative talking about police brutality and being mm -hmm. at the forefront, at least for his audience, um, when it comes to discussing those stories and posting those videos. I know that your counterparts, your friends, your friends <laughs> within the Republican community probably were telling you not to. They had mm -hmm. to be, right? What, so what was that like? Did you get any pushback from, from the Republicans? So that's, that's the crazy part. It depends. It really does. So I don't know if any of y'all know Irving Kristol. He's the father of Bill Kristol, big time political pundit. One of the things he used to say is that in America, you had two types of conservatives. You had ones who are anti-state and you had ones who are anti-left. The only things they care about is the opposite of whatever mm -hmm. the Democrats are for. You know, I've always been part of the anti-state side. So when you look at police misconduct, the fact is police are government employees, they're government agents. They are paid with your money to protect and serve. And when they're abusing that, you know, that, that's the type of anti-government, anti-state stuff that I've always been about. So I, I did get some pushback. Absolutely. I've got some folks that, you know, I used to, to talk to as far as like political stuff that are very much nothing an officer can do is wrong. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you've got a lot of people, at, at least they, they used to be in the GOP. A lot of them are unaffiliated now that are like, this is not what the government is supposed to do. The government is not supposed to roll up on you and because you said some mean words, pepper spray you in the face. You know, they're right. not supposed to be firing bullets. You know, there, there's that one in uh, Texas where this woman was just walking home from the grocery store, not doing anything. And she got shot by the police. You got the journalist in Minnesota who had her eye blown out by the police. Mm -hmm. You got the young black man in Washington, D.C., walking home, doing nothing, not part of a protest. Got his eye blown out by police like th that is not something that anyone should be in favor of, regardless of your political views. It's just, it just doesn't make sense to me. And so from my vantage point and the few folks that I still deal with, you know, I don't really talk to the Trumpers anymore. I mean, those folks, 
this whole, you know, orange God King stuff. I, I'm not down with that. But among the folks in the party that recognize that this ultimately is an issue of the government violating your rights, your God given rights enshrined in the Constitution. You know, you're protected from unreasonable searches, seizures, deprivation of life, liberty, property without due process, all that stuff. That is what we are supposed to be about. And it just happens that, you know, I took that to heart and uh, some of the, the Trump loving GOP did not. <laughs> I'm laughing because, surprised. yeah, I mean, because I, I, I just don't even know why you can identify as a conservative anymore. And we, we, you know, whenever we, whenever we come on, like it's only been, you know, it's been five years, but I, I tend to avoid what we probably would disagree on. Um, and, and maybe <laughs> one of these days when we have a, we have a lot more time, we could just, you know, jump on each other's podcast and just kind of like talk about the things that we, we, we actually disagree on because everything that you just said is, fundamentally uh, from the left, that's our perspective. Like we, we honestly believe everything that you just said in terms of the role of government, limited government in those regards. Um, I want to shift though, really quickly to the level of ignorance that is, that has to be spoken about because it is now contributing to half a million people being dead and now moving closer to right. uh, 600,000 uh, dead. There's a video, I, I don't know if it's from Idaho, but um, let's take a look at this video where now they're burning masks as a, as a symbol of their patriotism and a symbol, if you ask them, they're gonna say it's a symbol of their conservatism. Let's take a look at that clip. Training like, oh, as they go. Right like, yeah. <laughs> you think about book burnings, they're having a mask burning here, and kids are leading. Like, it's being celebrated. It just, it just no, it's so tacky. I can't even believe it's happening, but. It's, it's America, a, child. And, and listen, man, I, like we're friends. I'm not going to uh, dare make you accountable for any of that just because you identify as a conservative. But underneath underneath it is a level of ignorance and derangement that is detrimental to our survival as a species. And right. and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering not only obviously, you know, obviously, I know you think that that's, you know, a level of stupidity as well. But in the broader conservative circles. I mean, are there at least like five more like you who honestly can look at this? And are you, is there, is it like, is there 10? Like, because I, I feel like, I feel like a verse out of the Bible. Like, is there at least, if there's a, if there's a hundred conservatives who look at that video and think it's ignorant, then maybe we could save America. But I don't know, man. What do you think? So I'm going to first, I'm going to start by saying yes. It just, yes. There are other people like me out there. They exist. You know, there's some of them I chat with by email about trying to figure out what the, what the step is going forward, whether you start a new party or try and save the GOP or whatever, but I'm going to push back ever so slightly, just a little That's bit, like, uh, <laughs> because let's remember a lot of, a lot of anti-science nonsense percolates on the left too. You know, anti-vaccination stuff, you know, the whole use of these healing stones and, and stuff like that. So that, that's a now look, I'm not gonna lie to you, GOP is worse ignorance right is by ignorance is bipartisan. I give you that. Right. Right. So I'm, I'll stipulate the Republican Party is worse right now. But I think yeah. part of why that is is a lot of Republican politicians are spineless. They're cowards. Mm. They're not willing to tell the truth to their constituents. Mm. If they were honest about the severity of the pandemic you would not have a half million people dead. If Donald Trump said, look, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be as bad as the Spanish flu, potentially worse, wear a mask to stop it from happening. You would not have had things get as bad as they did. But the man was running for reelection. He was not willing to speak truth because he's afraid that it was gonna cost him the election because he's a moron. You know, if you look at people like Cuomo for all the scandals he's in right now, he saw a tremendous bump in his popularity because mm -hmm. At the beginning of the pandemic, all he did was go on TV and say, it's bad. This is how bad it is. Have some graphs of how bad it is. You know, Gavin Newsom in California, he's on the verge of getting recalled. But the fact is, he had a tremendous boost in his popularity when he started doing the same thing when this started. Any politician who is competent, who has just certain basic understandings of politics and how to govern, could have turned this into a tremendous boost to their popularity. Had Donald Trump said this is going to be severe, wear a mask. He would have gotten reelected. 
Guarantee you, he would have beaten Joe Biden and he would be president right now. But it's because he's a moron and the people in Congress backing him up are morons. They are terrified that they're going to get primaried. Being in office is the only thing they care about. That's ultimately the problem. If you have people in Congress who are like, you want to primary me and vote me out? Fine. But I'm going to tell you what it is, like it or not. We wouldn't have had this problem. And so you look at, the, you know, that, that mass burning. That's stupid because it's not just, you know, hurting the, the combat of the disease. It's polluting. Right. It's littering. It's a waste of perfectly good masks. I mean, you could have given them to yeah. anybody. You could have sold them joints on eBay if you wanted to. <laughs> you know, it, it reminds me like I can't remember what it was, what Keurig did to get in trouble. But when there was this whole spate of Sean Handy viewers throwing their Keurigs out the window, <laughs> Like you spent, you spent the money to buy the cure egg and now you're destroying it. Like what purpose does that serve? You know, that's just stupid. <laughs> Yeah, hey, it's really the, what is it's what's wrong with our healing stones over here on the left? Like, you, you can't, no. <laughs> look, look, and, and, and and I'm Haitian, so you know there's other things that I have to know. I'm just kidding, but people should people should all be, of the uh, science, the, the right the on both sides. I will agree yeah, with you yeah. um, that it there is stupidity, there is ignorance, and there's misinformation being passed around. Right? Uh, it just I just gotta highlight it a little bit more on, on, on the right, on the conservative side. But um, but <laughs> you're right. I can agree with you with oh, that one hundred percent. So I want to um, circle back to that conversation that we had just for for me for an, an education purpose. What is now? Because there is a space where we can separate. I don't, you said it, not me. We can separate <laughs> conservatives from Republicans. Could you right. explain that a little bit more to me? I, I mean, you're really looking at people who you got to decide, is the issue the tribe? Is that more important? I'm a Republican before everything else. Yeah. Or is the issue the stuff that we pretend the Republican Party used to be about? You know, the people that are going to be honest with you will tell you the Republican Party of today, none of the things they claim to believe they haven't held any of it. You know, mm -hmm. you had a, a tax cut that exploded the deficit. It used to be fiscal responsibility was a thing. You know, this whole notion of personal responsibility. Well, part of that is staying home if you can, wearing a mask when you're out in public to take care of your fellow man. You look mm -hmm. at the whole concept of dignity of life. We're all made in God's image. We should all be you know, treated as special from birth. And yet they're excusing police killing people because mm -hmm. someone happened to have a mental health crisis and the cops got bored mm -hmm. and decided that exterminating them was the more appropriate option. Mm -hmm. You know, the Republican Party of today has no principles. It is exclusively an anti-left party. They are in favor of whatever the Democrats are against and vice versa. You know, you look just I don't know if y'all saw the, uh, the interview with Oprah with uh, with uh, Meghan Markle Meghan. and mm -hmm. Prince. What's his name? You know, you have Republicans defending the British monarchy. These are these are patriots in air quotes, you know, and they're defending the things that we rebelled against in 1776. Like there's no coherence to anything right. that the Republican Party stands for today. I stipulate to that. But if you look at the people who actually care about the philosophical stuff, they care about good government, they care about personal responsibility, that sort of thing. Those folks exist. Now, whether they're going to become Democrats, I doubt it, but they might. Some will. You know, most of them are just going to be, you know, kind of unaffiliated, stuck in the wilderness, trying to figure out what happens next. And, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with them in the future. Let me I, I ask you this. I asked you a question like this five years ago and it's coming back to me. I'm going to ask you again. Do you think you could run as a Republican in your state and win at any level, whether it be state rep, state senator or con congressman? Hell no. No chance. So like when I ran in 2016, you know, it was I, I live in a very Democratic district. So even when I ran, I knew I was going to lose. But if you look at the partisan lean of the district, it was a, it was a D plus 36 district. So in a normal year, a Democrat should win by 36 points. My opponent won by 31. So we at least picked up a five percent margin. I got more votes than any Republican who would ever run for my seat. I outperformed Donald Trump. I outperformed Pat McCrory, the guy running for governor. You know, I'm in this low level state legislative seat and I'm doing better than the people with all the money. Obviously, I had some kind of something that appealed to crossover people. I don't know if it's my personality, my platform. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But now I'd never even make it past the primary. There's no chance. Mm. The fact that back in 2016, I got told that if I did not support Donald Trump, I could not expect any support from the state party. Wow. My response was, well, I guess I'm not going to have any support from the state party because Donald Trump wow. is unfit to be president of the United States. 
I stand by that. Would it have been nice to win? Absolutely. I would love to be in the legislature trying to fix stuff. But the fact is, I got to be able to sleep at night. And everything I said back in 2016 was absolutely true. Because you look at the past four years, and like I said, I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. Right. So everything I said, everyone was like, oh, you're being hysterical. There's no way it's going to be that bad. It was worse. It was absolutely yeah. worse. So, no, I could not I could not run as a Republican. The problem is that I couldn't run as a Democrat either, because even though, you know, they love the justice reform stuff that I'm talking. I'm going to say only some of them love the justice reform stuff, by the way. The That's love it. of police brutality is strongly bipartisan. Yeah. But even if they bought that, when I say stuff like. Are we sure the government should be doing X? I don't know what X is, but they pick any oh, X. Yeah, I was, I was like, waiting. I was waiting for X. I was like, "What's X going to be?" No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you can pick a thing. Like, there's stuff that the state government could probably do that the federal government absolutely should not, and vice versa. But pick any given topic. If it's something that you even question whether or not the government should do it, I'm gonna get. I get so much hate on Twitter from those folks. You know, every mm-hmm. month I do a, a, an Ask Me Anything thread. And anything where I even hint that maybe the government is not the appropriate way to do this, people flip out. I'm gonna, let me give you an example. I'm going to give you an example right in the justice reform area. One okay. of the insurrectionists who got arrested for raiding the Capitol on January 6th happens to be a trans person. And they were stripped naked and held in isolation in jail because they had an untreated arm wound and they were going on a hunger strike to try and get attention for you know, getting medical care. Well, in prisons, when you go on a hunger strike, the first thing they're going to do is put you on suicide watch. And when you're on suicide watch, they put you in isolation. So this person was stripped nude, held in isolation where the guards could just walk by and stare at their naked body whenever they wanted. Mm. That type of stuff is inhumane. But when I pointed out on Twitter that that is not how our prisons should operate, that is not how the government should keep people who have not been yet convicted of anything, I had a whole bunch of Democrats saying, no, oh, screw those people. Those are insurrectionists and Trumpers. They get what they deserve. You that's know, how I felt and, when and you I, said it. <laughs> I hate to say it, but that's how I felt when you that's said it. That's not how I, I do, felt. That's I, not. Do, I do hear, I do see what you're saying. It is yeah. inhumane and that yeah. shouldn't be happening. And that is a systemic thing. I, and we have to stop it at the root. We got to make sure it's not happening to anyone. So let me, uh, let, yeah. let me jump in here only for the sake of time, because we have one more guest coming up that we, we, that we absolutely have to get to Greg. The next time we come on, I want us to only focus on what you and I disagree on, right? Okay. Because I feel like I feel like it's. it's I think that'll be, be you sure oh, you want to do that? No, no, yeah, because it's it's not often you run into a good faith conservative. So I like if we got a good faith conservative and T. Greg said, I want us to have a good faith conversation on things because actually I agree with you on on the inhumane treatment of that yeah. particular prisoner, like uh, 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 uh deep, well. I mean, I guess I could say detainee the way America works. Uh, but T. Greg Doucet, uh, tell the people where they could find your work and how they should get up with you. So primary thing is on Twitter. It's at Greg underscore Doucet, G-R-E-G underscore D-O-U-C-E-T-T-E. You'll see the police brutality mega thread pinned to the tweet. You know, you got the right guy. I am not the Canadian <laughs> bodybuilder Greg Doucet. He's super famous on YouTube. That is not me. <laughs> that's why you got to put in T, Greg. No, said. that's what happened when I Googled him. I'm like, who is this? This is Addison. Yo, you why see a guy like, like, you know, you know, doing muscle poses and everything else. That is not me at all. <laughs> gotcha. Duly noted. We got to get you back here sometime. Good. It's got to be, it can't be another five years before we have you back, man. Thanks so much for joining us. When we come back, we'll be talking. Uh, it's our, definitely our pleasure. When we come back, we'll be talking with Brianna Westbrook about Kirsten Cinema and the movement there in Arizona. More like it or not, after this. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show so far. Make sure that you stay tuned. We have some really good guests, great guests coming on uh, very momentarily here. So let's see what we got. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat room. Good morning, Mama. I see you in there. Good morning, Susan. Hope y'all are enjoying this. Hey, make sure that you hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit that like button, y'all. Make sure that you get everything. You know, hit the like button, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. So you always know when the morning. See there it go. When like it or not, it's going down, y'all. Anthony, I appreciate that. Mar, good morning. Thought I was nothing without you. 
you made me beg and you made me call. Andy, good morning. You me and you made me fall for you. Brand, brand, good morning, Bubba <laughs> Nat, hey, good morning. Everybody's gonna have a great weekend. I know I am. What's up, side? What's going on? Good morning, Purple Rain Hearts. I see you. But you cheated and deceived me. Mom, you better sing this song in the chat. You had me. Silly Dragon, what's going on? Oh yeah, we are getting the lines in uh, up real soon, so stay tuned, Andrea. We got it coming though. We had a few technical difficulties, but they're gonna get it situated real soon, okay? So it should be open momentarily, y'all. Shout out to the line then, and shout out to the bride. <laughs> When I tell you, D. Barnwell, what's going on? Like, I really forgot that it was Friday myself until just then. Like, wait a minute, it's Friday. You left me stranded, looking like a fool. Chuck Diesel, shout out, brother. All those nights alone in our bedroom. Say that. I'm trying to play y'all all the good hits from this week that I played. It was so much new music. My gosh. Jawan's and James Williams. It's so funny. You got like my full name, but like not the full name. Like your middle and last name is my first and last. That's kind of crazy. Okay. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat room taking us out, y'all. Make sure that you are hitting that like button, y'all. Welcome back to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth and not care who doesn't like it. Joining us now is Brianna Westbrook, who is the vice chair and executive committee member of the Arizona Democratic Party. Brianna is a member of the Justice Democrats and former political editor of Equality Arizona. Brianna, thank you so much for joining us. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on the show today. Excited. No, I have Absolutely. Our pleasure. We connected over the weekend um, and uh, in reaction to um, the Democratic, the eight Democrats who voted down the raise in the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour, uh, specifically uh, Kirsten Sinema, uh, because of her performance. Right. It's 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 one thing to to vote it down which is the problem. The core problem is, is that they're not fighting for workers, but it's also the insult to injury. Could you just give us your thoughts and your reaction to not only her performance, but also um, the, the attack on workers, on labor? Um, I'm, I'm very disappointed. Um, here in Arizona in particular, um, we are at the last year of a gradual increase in our minimum wage. Um, a few years back, a, a great organization that has been doing the groundwork out here, um, Lucha, passed Arizona Prop 206, which gradually inc increased the state's minimum wage to $12 an hour. Um, this year is the, is the final year of that um, increasement, increasement in, in wages. Um, and when we look at the state of Arizona in particular, um, 
in order to afford a two bedroom um, meeker, meter, uh, just average apartment um, or home, you need to earn about $22 an hour. Um, so had she voted for this, had Democrats had the vote, um, you know, we would have lifted um, a lot of Arizonans out of poverty. And the fact that she did it in the way that she did it um, kind of added insult to injury, if you ask me. Yeah. And, and, and it's the insult to injury that I think is going to stick with a lot of people because there's there's, again, eight Democrats who voted against it. All of them have previously stated that there needed to be a raise in the minimum wage. And when they had the opportunity to do it, they didn't do it. But coming back to Arizona, um, if you look at uh, Senator Sinema's background and you look at her uh, language, you look at you would think that she would absolutely be one of the people who would stand up for labor. But when the opportunity came, she didn't. Can you I don't know how, how much you followed her rise, but talk to us about that shift from being someone who sounds extremely progressive to actually toting the line for the establishment. Yeah, she uh, she has evolved over time when she first jumped into Arizona politics. Um, she was a member of the Green Party. She was a very outspoken um, anti-war activist, um, you know, Martha McSally used uh, an image of her at an anti-war protest, actually, in like a pink tutu. I'm sure some people in Arizona or some maybe some of your listeners may remember that attack ad that Martha mm -hmm. McSally put out. Um, and what happened is she lost as a Green Party candidate. She joined the Democrats um, and uh, ended up winning a seat at the legislature. And uh, rumor has it. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's a pretty... Uh, I think it could be proven because uh, that's kind of when the shift happened. But Janet Napolitano, um, mm. she uh, was a, a role model, I guess, for cinema is what I've been told by many of her um, close friends um, and was inspired by Janet Napolitano's rise. And that relationship that they had, I guess, morphed her into who she is today. And what she's done is as she's gone further up, I guess you could say in the notches in government, and now that she's in Senate, she's continued to get more and more conservative and drift further and further away from that original person that she was um, in that pink tutu at anti-war protests as a Green Party candidate. Um, and it's 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 uh, personally, I think that's what a lot of people have um, issues with in politics because politicians typically will do whatever's selling at the moment and they won't mm. be they won't they won't stick to their values and what's important to them they'll do what's um most important to their donors um and their re-election campaigns and cinema in particular i don't understand this because it doesn't make sense because she's not up for re-election until 2024 so when she's right. making these conservative positions she's assuming that arizona is going to be um, more conservative than it is today. And we know that that is not true. The state is right. becoming more and more democratic. More young people are registering the vote. More Latinos are, are coming out to vote. Um, so, yeah, that's a. Mm. <laughs> I know that, um, you know, when that whole video went viral or seeing cinema in that way was a definite embarrassment to the state of Arizona. Um, yeah. And your position at with the Democratic Party. Tell me more about that particular position and how you guys are structuring together to fight yeah. people like cinema and get yeah. her out of there by 2024. Um, well, I'm, I'm the new educational coordinator. I was elected in, in January. So I'm uh, a, uh, I have a very important position in the Arizona Democratic Party with the Arizona mm -hmm. Democratic Party platform. That is my wheelhouse. That's where I'll be working with the Congrats resolution. To you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so in our, in our, in our platform, we support a living wage. So I am going to be working with the progressive caucus, maybe to censor her again. Um, that's a, that's a strong possibility. Um, and I'm going to make sure that, you know, we find a candidate to primary her because I think primaries are healthy, um, and challenge her on these issues. Yeah. When you say yeah. censor her, what is, what, what does that mean? Um, it basically means no resources, don't prop her up. The Arizona Democratic Party will not be uh, um, will not be an ally. Basically, it'll okay. it'll end up blocking her. Mm. Gotcha. I, I think that's that's, and I, I think like that's the appropriate. Yeah, no, that's the appropriate response because it's it's, and again, I I, I don't want to I want to harp too much on 
her presentation and how she did it. But it's the combination of what she did and how she did it that I think fueled the attention on her as opposed to all the other senators who voted against it, right? I think all of those senators should be primaried. I think every single person who's fighting against workers and labor, and I know you would agree, should be primaried. But just the performance, it's almost like she got compared to Marie Antoinette, right? And let them eat cake. It was, it was, yeah. it was such an assault on an open wound in a moment when people are really hurting. Did that contribute to, uh, in terms of the Arizona party and just, even not the party, but, but just the act is there. Did, did you all feel that salt in the open wound as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the thumbs down, the not putting the purse down. Um, then she comes out and she says that it was sexist, that people are criticizing her for this. And that once again is, is her, um, you know, trying to, uh, change the, the topic of the conversation because the heat's on her. You know what? Sexist is not raising the wage because women have been disproportionately affected by the pandemic and lost their wages. Um, yeah. So it's, it's her once again, trying to, to play political football and, and uh, jump out of accountability. Mm. And it's, it's, that people, it's interesting sorry, because it's, it's even people on the left who are using that rhetoric right now. And um, she's pulling it and she's utilizing it. And she's trying to say that, you know, this is what it was. She probably didn't even have that, that, that whole idea in mind, but she's using it to catapult her out of the that, mess yeah. that she created for herself. So um, it's, it's interesting to watch that, but I'm glad that there are people like you, Rihanna, in this area and in this space to say things like, we will censor your ass. <laughs> like we will shut you up. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. <laughs> what is the next move then? Where, 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 where do Arizona Democrats go from here, whether it be the, the actual party or just the activists, the organizing? What's, because four years, I, I think some of the calculus is, is that we're going to forget in four years. Mm. Yeah, well, we're definitely not going to forget. Um, activists and Democrats here in Arizona will not. This is the only thing that I have seen that has actually brought um, Democrats on the left of all political ideology and thought process um, actually together. Um, we've been organizing and have a, a pretty broad coalition of different organizations, as well as county Democratic parties that are collectively organizing in solidarity to push cinema on the issues. Um, and we've been doing all sorts of pressure campaigns. We did a, we've been doing illuminations in major metropolitan cities in the state of Arizona for the last week and a half. We were down in Tucson last week, um, a couple nights ago on Saturday night, we're at Mill Avenue in downtown Tempe where uh, the ASU college campus is. Um, we had shined an illumination on uh, one of the historic uh, mills there. So thousands of people saw this. Um, we've been writing uh, pieces to different uh, news outlets. There was a great opinion piece that was published in the Arizona Republic that I urge your listeners to, to read. I retweeted it a couple days ago. Um, we did a, a Venmo campaign um, just to get yeah. under her skin. So we had... Uh, a lot of people collectively ask her for $15 on Venmo. Um, <laughs> Petty. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. <laughs> We're doing it all. Yes. Hey, and you know what? Um, I, I know your time is short this morning, but I, I appreciate and, and admire the efforts that you all like you all hit the ground running immediately, which is why I wanted to have you on this morning so that we could help support that. So tell everyone how they can get up with you and if they want to help with this push, because it's, it's a long four years. But I, I think we have I, I think she stirred enough. She poured enough salt in our wound for us to, to, to stay in the Remember, trenches with you all for four years. So how mm -hmm. should people connect and support these campaigns? Um, you can follow me on Twitter at B Westbrook AZ8. I, I retweet a lot of the organizations that we're working with. Follow Progress um, Arizona. They're a great progressive organization that is, is doing amazing work. They're the ones like leading off with this illumination um, campaign. Um, those two um, outlets would probably be the easiest way to, to get involved. Uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Brianna Westbrook, vice chair and executive committee member of the Arizona Democratic Party. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank You're you, welcome. Brianna. I'm glad, glad to be here. Can't wait to come back. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure's ours. We'll have you back anytime. 
that said, Rebecca, I know at this point, normally, Rebecca, I, I would like James, it's in your hands. And, 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 and but no, James it's not, not because it's, it's 10 19. We done got through three interviews, <laughs> tell some stories. Look, what you got? It, what you got in the bag, Rebecca? What you got? So, I know you got something so, up your sleeve. No, because Dwayne wants to talk about this, and I think it's very important to talk about our folks in Atlanta this weekend. Okay. Oh boy. Um, it's a lot. I mean, let's roll this video though, Dwayne, so people can see what was happening aside from the maskless folks being here. Give me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, you know, we're going to have a new rule. Okay, here we go. Look, before, before um, I just got to say this to the people. I need some answers from y'all folks down in Atlanta about what's going on <laughs> with y'all cousins. Because oh, come on now. <laughs> uh, we trying to go back outside here soon, and y'all yeah. cousins don't want to let it happen. So here you go. Mm. All Star Weekend. Yeah, All Star. Which I'm trying to see which club it is. I don't care which club it is. This club is too packed out. That's what I know. Not a no, no. mask. Not a mask. That's Future. I think it was. That up was there. Future. Is this is this the event where uh, uh, um, wasn't your boy here? Um, the one that just got let out, who threw his hat up in the air and it, and it never came back down. Bobby Schmurder. Is this Bobby the event Schmurter. he was at? I think Oh, so. I don't know where he was, but he's been wearing his mask when I see him out, even though he shouldn't be out in these um, environments. But there's a there's a video of him on stage with Meek Mills and Meek Mills all up in that man's face without a mask on. Listen, like, I, I guess I'm never going to be able to go out in Atlanta again, probably for another two but, years, because this is ridiculous. But here's the thing. You see why in, in, in this is the... I thought you was gonna show the video of them cars on, on ain't got no no more um, tires. On. That's, that's also what was happening in Atlanta. But they um, got got people. People were getting got. But let's talk about this this area of the pandemic first in Atlanta. Yes, yeah. these people. Um, I we are here. Mm. And um, this is happening. And I am quite embarrassed to be uh, somebody who lives in the, the Atlanta area. Yeah. And um, But here's what I'll say about this. The people that was cutting me off in the streets ain't had no Atlanta tags. They had Tennessee <laughs> tags, child. They yep. had Florida tags, yep. child. They had all kinds. They was from other cities, North Carolina. South just Carolina. coming over here, South Carolina, just coming over here. With with there could be COVIDness, mixing it with the COVIDness that we have now. Right. And um and I don't even think that we're really going to see the true numbers of what it yeah. resulted from this this past weekend. These clubs were packed out. You think they were checking temperatures at the door? You think they were asking people to inf they were enforcing a mask um, uh, rule Man, they, yeah. for these places? Do you think that there was a, a, nope. um, a capacity a, a number for these places? Hell no. Nope. Nah. They wanted to do it like before. Now, these celebrities that are going out, they're the ones that have the shot. So they, they go out, they mm. be around you, you know, and they're, they, they, know they can go home and they be, be okay. Yo, but you ain't sorry to say yet. it, but you knocking on death's door. <laughs> and <laughs> I hate like to say a whole it that way. comorbidity. They out there play. They like, we've been targeted by this disproportionately. So by COVID-19 and it just blows me away to see our people just out there. Like, I don't care. I'm invincible. It ain't going to hit me. And and here we are, like six hundred thousand people. We're coming up on six hundred thousand people dead, and they still going to the club. And no, they ain't got nary vaccination. In matter of fact, they don't believe they. Don't, a lot of them don't even want to get the vaccine, right? Uh, it's true. And it's it's just it's my. So I know we were making fun of the people burning the mask, but Rebecca, you never let us let off the 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 boot off the neck of these people in Atlanta. I Ooh. can't because they was booting people's cars too. Um, but I can't. Was out there, <laughs> they had, listen, she saw people, people came cutting her, cutting her off on the way to the club. Oh yeah, where, yeah, Rebecca, you were on the way to your. <laughs> I was on the way to get my hair braided. <laughs> mm. Did they wear a mask? Actually, no, no, no. I was coming from getting my hair braided, pissed, yeah. pissed, because I'm like, I, I get anxiety driving 85 South. I don't yeah. like. I just don't like 85 South. People will, and then they ain't from here, so they. People were coming across from the first lane. I'm in like the fifth lane. They are coming straight across, not caring to get to this exit. When I finally see the exit, it's the exit where the club's at. And yeah. I'm talking about that whole thing, car accidents, was, everything. And I'm looking at them like, y'all just to go get COVID. Y'all all in this line just to go get COVID. This is not a Mex this is not a vacation to Mexico. This is not nothing. Y'all literally are in Atlanta. Atlanta is going to be here. Yeah, Atlanta For, uh, is going to be here. 
it's it's the club gonna be open in in six months, y'all. The club will be there. I had to drive through it too, um, but I was I was on the way to to the the children's hospital because Jeremiah damn near broke his toe off mm. being adventurous, but he's fine. But I saw uh, like they, like listen, folks in Atlanta can't drive anyway. Sorry, folks. Uh, the only place that's worse driving than Atlanta is Boston. Boston might have like worse drivers than Atlanta. But I saw what you were saying. Like we just had people just cutting across eight lanes like i'm Scaring like y'all me. this I just had it. no sense whatsoever and that's why a lot of you guys came here with 22s and left here with bricks <laughs> <laughs> oh 22s and left with bricks baby no somebody <laughs> even stole the, the car door <laughs> of the whole door the door on this suv that was like <laughs> 90s, <laughs> like a SUV from back when, you know what I'm saying? Like, wait, they got an old night used to be out there in them joints, you know? Like, it was a they did stole you, the they stole the whole car door, and I think it was else. They was like, damn, my fingerprints did, is on it. Hey, did, grab that, <laughs> grab that, <laughs> take the whole door. They got my friend. Did you see the GoFundMe's of, of, of all the little shawties who got here and got stuck? They had a GoFundMe, like, help me get home from Atlanta. And they wait, no, they, I didn't see that. They yeah. ain't doing GoFundMe's, yeah. It, it I mean, oh this, I'm, I'm like. Who, I don't know how y'all got down here, who y'all came down here with, but if you in our city and you got to go fund me to get home, that means you shouldn't have came. That's what that you means. Shouldn't have, you shouldn't have never came. And this is this is interesting because I remember, you know, I know, I know back when I was in my younger years, um, <laughs> in co- I'm still young, but um, back when I was in my younger years and in, in, in college at FAM, we would go places and be like, I mean, YOLO, and just figure it out as we go. Who's going to cover gas? How are we going to get gas to drive back up or whatever the case may be? Um, And it was like Mm. living on the edge. But the people, it's funny because these kids weren't prepared for that kind of life, you know? Uh, (laughs) So they're just coming here not knowing that these bo- these men in Atlanta will leave you for dead, oh, baby. Yeah. It's no, a they new, will. It's a new generation, it's a, a new whole... era. <laughs> they going to leave you for <laughs> Like, ain't none of that. Yeah, you flew me out, so can you fly me back? Oh, no, sweetie. <laughs> it was two days. That maybe it, 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 hey, the, the my generation over. of men, we, we, we ain't in these streets no more, y'all. These are the... the the generation after us don't give a damn. Like this, you, you own care. your own. But the rule always was like, is their parents not teaching them anymore? Never go somewhere if you ain't got enough money to get back. That's just the bottom line. You That's gotta it. have enough money to get back. And y'all out I here don't understand how me. they not, they don't know this. I'm telling you, they don't know this because look, I sound like an old lady, but I'm gonna go there. Social media will teach these people literally that you're gonna get flued out. But they never talk about getting flued back, baby. There is never a you you got flued out. But oh, you didn't man. get flued back. Oh, yes, I, look, and for the white folks that understand, don't don't understand. We understand. Yes, we understand. I yes. said flued with the ed. <laughs> it, it won't you just, got flued out. It won't just young girls either. It you was ain't getting flued back. It was one of I wait, saw. Wait. It, it was one that I saw that was like, uh, I need to get home to my three kids. Like, oh, oh Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Listen, all we for need, All Star Weekend, COVID you, filled situation. I, I know you don't like Kevin Samuels. But I need to see what he gonna say about that. I hope he's talking if, if about that. If one of those women were to call in, no, I oh would my want God. one of those women to call in. Just, in. just cause, baby, baby, like, like, but she, they, they raised the money, so maybe they good. Maybe it was a hustle. Maybe it was a hustle because somebody on live felt and bad. The, and this, 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 it wasn't new me. Brand of folks, they do, <laughs> um, they do hustle on GoFundMe. They do, they do do that as well. Um, but there was a lot going on this weekend, and it really hurts my heart to see that. And it's like. You know, my brother, he's here and we all were like together because I, I I miss him so much or whatever the case may be. So we did family time, family dinner. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, it's just us. But I was like, dang, everyone else is in the middle of Atlanta. And it's <laughs> like, I, I we looked at the pictures and stuff and we were like, there is no possible way. And here that, I am. I used to be in those environments though. Like, I cannot believe that. COVID has definitely changed my view on those kind of things. I cannot believe that I was a one little Where's Waldo person in the middle of those pictures. I cannot believe that I never allowed myself to like really feel free and dance. I I know I used to I used to go home pissed. Shoes were stepped on, like getting pushed around. Nah, you got to be in the VIP section. I'm sorry. Like, like No, back I, then there was no VIP section yeah. for like it is today. It was, yeah. the, when we were the little college people, there was, it was just. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because they always Literally, had the VIP. 
Yeah, no, the VIP wasn't as, as fabulous as it is today. Now, I never stand in lines, you know, before COVID. I was never standing in lines. Never, never. And uh, I always had VIP. I, I never so, said, I didn't say, but, I'm, just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I, I can't wait that. to get back out into the streets, but never again can I ever be in a crowd of of, of those like No, you. but like, everywhere in Atlanta can't. will be crowded though, Ben. It's, as it's, soon as they really, everything in Atlanta will be crowded. They will yeah. never find me. They will never find me in those spaces again i just i, I think i'm scarred they just won't i, I just can't it's, do it. it's 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 stress induced like i get anxiety looking at it now hell i got anxiety sitting in the emergency room this weekend and there was only one other person on the other side like i'm like spraying stuff down i'm like sanitizing <laughs> the hands doing, and we had on we it. had on two masks i had on my uh you know the little visor to cover up your eyes and i kept trying to put the visor on jeremiah head so you know and he kept knocking it off and i just gave up i'm like all right it is what it is but i just i mean i'm with you i can't i don't know if i'll ever be able to do crowds like that again but um yeah that's that's a that's a mess and i don't it's, even think it, it's, it's going to so be january weird. it's going to be 2022 before we could actually be safe out here in these streets again, because y'all I mean, like, I'm don't want to stay vacation. your butts home. Yeah, I'm going. I want to leave the country. I yeah. just I, let me get the vaccine, and I'm gonna go to like New Zealand because they already like, have concerts. Just do stuff. something you haven't done. It mm. you, y'all been pulling up to Atlanta for years, for it's years. Atlanta, it's the same clubs. It's, it's the, the it's, it, it's the same lounges. It's the same sweet lounge. It's all it's all the same. It's it ain't changed much Nothing in the last changed. twenty years. And you know? dude is still going with the whole, um, you know, Fabo shades and and and, and the, the gold sh- bell. The, what, they're still doing that, too. Old oh, dudes man. are still pulling up. So enough is enough. Ain't nothing in Atlanta. Y'all definitely are. I'm telling you, these numbers for COVID in Atlanta it's and in these other trope. states it's are going control. to be are going to be special. Um, well, they yeah, came here and they went left with uh, with some um well, some of them still here. So shout out to all the shawties who are still stuck in Atlanta. Good you luck think with that. You think, it's just, you think it's just the women? It's this dude well, that's, out it's here the, too. It's the women who... They but, got like, flewed I mean, out and not flew I, back. I <laughs> <laughs> Brother, if you got flewed out and you can't get yourself back home, mm, 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 mm. I hope they make a thread about it. It's very telling on both sides. I I, I want to go. I want to go to Twitter and read the thread about the dudes who got flewed out and got stuck here in Atlanta because that's the kind of joy I need in my life. Or the dudes, the dudes who came in um, um, foreign rentals and left with no (laughs) tires. Amen. (laughs) Amen. You know, you they, know they, didn't, get, they didn't get the you know insurance. They, yeah, and that's how you know you mess with somebody young because I ain't playing around with nobody else's. I'm doing that $25 a day insurance because I ain't doing... You just come to Atlanta at your own peril because they cannot drive and they will leave you sitting on bricks and they will leave you flued out by yourself <laughs> sitting in the... Are they even in... I'm wondering if these sisters are like even in hotel rooms. Like, they, they got some real troubles No, it's, here. A, it's, it's the era of Airbnb. Hotels were already booked out. Well, I'm saying like, but, but you know, when that money run out and that night is over. Oh, they they're, they're asking Airbnb folks, can I stay another night? Stay Sometimes, night. And, and this is the funny thing because um, the, the, the African man, he, um, <laughs> he, he, he owns, he does Airbnbs, right? So the African angel. Yeah. I mean, Satan, but um, he <laughs> he does Airbnbs, and it's funny because um, when people will try to, and it, it's funny, I watch this, and we will we'll discuss this all the time. People will try to, when they on their last night, act like they're not going to pick up their phone when it comes to checkout. And you know, it's COVID, so we're not trying to meet with the people and things like nah, that. They, they'll do up, stuff though. like not pick up the phone. They'll mm-hmm. like say something happened in the house, whatever, just to get extra time as they're trying to get back or figure mm-hmm. out how they're going to sleep the next night or eat the next night or get to where they're going. And um, he was telling me how one person was saying they can't find the key or something happened in the apartment or, and then they stopped picking up their phone. They weren't picking up the phone at all. <laughs> all of a sudden, um, he pulls up to the Airbnb and he spots somebody coming out of the apartment, not the person that he put in there. And then they drop the key on the floor just like that and walk away. <laughs> they do stuff like that to get extra right. time and things like that. Cause I, I mm. just, I don't understand. Well, I, I'll say this for everybody who got here and y'all were broke. Um, that is, that is still part and parcel of a <laughs> capitalistic system that needs to be overthrown. <laughs> so maybe this experience could shake you up and realize that y'all not going to live this Instagram life. All right. So join the revolution. Anyway, that's all I got, Rebecca. 
Yeah, what during the revolution that will not be televised. And we're ah. talking for the progressive side of things. Mm. Uh, look, Ben done turned me into a progressive, but I had to see it and feel it for myself. And now I mm. understand I can never go back. I will never go back to the strip club. See, okay? see, see, see that, <laughs> the, next, the next step is to change, turn you into a socialist. That's all I got for today, folks. <laughs> Love you guys. Meet it. We got like some. We, got. Hey, shout out to DJ Exclusive in the chat room. We miss you, man. Get your butt back here tomorrow. In the meantime, we're going to play the virtual version of DJ Take it away. (laughs) Take it away. See y'all tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for that, y'all. Thank you so much for the love, y'all. Make sure that y'all are hitting that like button and make sure that you subscribe so you always know when Like It Out is going down, y'all, all right? Of course, we couldn't let the show in, but at least see it having a few couple of minutes or something of our brother Nick eating that's part of the pride and the lion's den, y'all. Shout out to Nick again. Thank you for the hot track, sir. Melody, good morning. Love you, too. Thank you so much. Mistakes, you know that I ain't perfect. I know the days have come and you don't think that it's all worth it Just know I'm trying to make it, trying to take it up a level Cause you're my favorite girl, my pride, my world And may I have this dance, just give me a chance Cause I'm a better man Rest and in I peace to Marky D, of the fat boys That's the music I used to listen to when I was growing up to see where we could be Recipe Prince Marky D Gotta put some respect on my boy Let's chill Start a family Have a whole lot of screaming kids Let's chill Baby you and me Ain't nothing that we can't win Let's chill Please believe in me Baby we can take over the world Let's chill Just you and me Cause you're my favorite girl now baby take a minute let me get up in your mental so i can show you places things and faces it's essential for us to be the best to take the test that lovers have to just let me prove my love will rise above so may i have this dance just give me a chance cause i'm a better man and i know that those and prayers for Texas, y'all. If you're in Texas, man, keep your head up. Last day of that freeze, y'all. To see how we could be. Baby. My mama is giving me ultimatums in the chat room. She says she needs all my music by tomorrow. All caps. Y'all see it. 42 years old, and I'm still getting attacked by my mama. Stop playing. Love you, mama. Please believe in me. Baby, we can take over the world, yeah. Just you and me, cause you're my favorite girl. All right, family, this is gonna do it for your boy James Bubba Williams, DJ Exclusive. Hope y'all enjoyed the show. Hope y'all enjoyed the week. We had a lot of great guests, a lot of great stuff happened this week, y'all. It was an awesome, 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 amazing week. We hope that you enjoy your weekend. Make sure that you be safe. Double mask up. Stay warm. All that good stuff, y'all. Make sure that you tune in on Monday, 8.30 a.m. for your next episode of Like It or Not. And we'll see y'all tonight at the Patreon party, y'all. Your boy, DJ Exclusive. Is out. Oh, before I go, make sure that you download the Voices app. It is on the App Store, and you can search by Voices by Action Sprout 
or just search for Action Sprout and it will come up. Um, or you can scan either of the QR codes on your screen and get the app. Use group code 213756. This way you can share your pictures, videos, photos, whatever you have, you can share with us and we'll get it on air, y'all. Again, we thank you so much. We love y'all. And we'll see y'all tonight. Deuces. When I feel done.